Chapter two, fuel system. The fuel system is one of the most important aspects of your 351 Cleveland swap. The system will either make you or break you depending on your skill level with carburetor tuning, desires of fuel mileage and idle quality, and ultimately your patience with either of the two fuel systems. You must first make a determination if you want either a carburetor or fuel injection. Your choice will determine what fuel pump you will be installing in the fuel tank to replace your factory unit and if you will be installing a fuel pressure regulator with return in the engine compartment. With my swap, the original plan was to start out with a 750 Carter AFB just to get the engine fired up and going. I purchased the Carter for little to nothing back in the late 90s and it served its purpose. However, I later found that I could not tune the Carter to work well with my 351 Cleveland. I always had this terrible stumble when flooring the accelerator that no accelerator pump, rod, or jet combination would resolve. I researched carburetors and looked at various units from Demon to standard Hollies, but feared that I would be buying either too big or too small of a carburetor for my application, but then also would have to spend hours and hard-earned money on gaskets and jet changes. So I ultimately purchased a Fitech Go EFI 600 fuel system. It eliminated the need to buy a carburetor size that may or may not work because it adjusts itself when it's running. However, a word of caution. No out-of-the-box EFI system is perfectly set up and fitted to your engine. You must spend time to learn the various parts and terminology and inner workings of these units so you can better understand changing the inputs within the EFI system's computer. Most of these units allow you to set basic parameters and it operates the system from there or you can go full-blown tuning by changing inputs. The beauty is that it is set up for you to decide what you want to do. Carburetor. If you decide to go with a carburetor, here's what you will need to do for a street strip setup. You must locate the carburetor specifications that have to do with the carburetor's fuel inlet minimum and maximum pressures. This is basically how little fuel pressure the carburetor needs to operate and the maximum pressure that it can accept before fuel is forced past the needle and seat and cause flooding of the carburetor. Also you must figure out the fuel gallons per minute requirement of the carburetor. This is the highest fuel flow rate that the carburetor requires to operate correctly, typically at wide open throttle. I will use the 750 Carter AFB for example. Minimum recommended fuel pressure is 2 PSI. Optimal is 5.5 PSI and maximum is 6 PSI. To find the required gallon per minute, first you must approximate the horsepower produced by your 351 Cleveland, unless you have a dynamometer run sheet on your engine. It is okay to overestimate actual horsepower in this case. For example, I will estimate 450 horsepower for the calculation. 450 horsepower times 0.5, which is the typical brake specific fuel consumption, equals 225 pounds an hour of fuel. Then we divide 225 by 6, which is the typical weight of a gallon of gas in pounds, and we get a rate of 37.5 gallons per minute as the engine requirement. This falls into the range of the Airtex E2484 electric fuel pump which supplies 50 gallons per minute at 5 to 8 PSI. This gives you the required rate and then some in case you decide to increase the horsepower of your engine or fuel requirements increase. This pump is smaller in diameter than the factory in-tank pump, but it will fit. I secured the pump assembly simply with a hose clamp. Everything else you need, to, you need to drop the fuel tank and make the change is included with the pump. Next, you will have to purchase a fuel pressure regulator with a return port and preferably with a gauge that is rated to handle the 8 PSI the pump can put out. The rest of the components needed will be outlined in chapter 9. These parts such as hoses, cables, and fittings should not be pre-purchased. Measurements must first be taken 
once all the main components are installed to ensure proper length and fitment. Fuel injection. If you decide to go with fuel injection, you must first refer to the EFI manufacturer's instructions that came with your unit. The instructions will specify the fuel pump requirement for the system you choose and if the system is regulated and has a port for fuel return. For this example, we will use the Fitech Go EFI 600 system. Fitech recommends a 255 liter per hour fuel pump with this system. You can purchase all of the components separately or you can purchase a package with the components included. Also, there is no need for an external regulator when using the Fitech EFI system. It is incorporated within the throttle body and has a port for return fuel. Some other systems may not have provisions for a fuel return or a fuel regulator, so you must follow the recommendations. I purchased the standalone system, then purchased a 255 liter per hour fuel pump from Summit Racing. This pump was branded as a Summit Racing pump, but was a Walboro fuel pump when I received it. It came with all the necessary parts you will need to drop the fuel tank and install the pump. The pump is bulky, but it will fit in the fuel pump assembly very securely. With an EFI system, you will have quite a bit more work required to install the unit, as well as a few choices to make. With the Fitech Go EFI 600, there are provisions for activating an electric fan, and it has electronic computer controlled timing built in that can be disabled if undesired. You must use an electric fan while performing this particular swap, so I suggest considering using this control. I also suggest using the electronic computer controlled timing. When properly set, it is invaluable when making timing adjustments between runs or generally driving around town. I will talk more about this and timing in Chapter 5, Ignition. Each system will come with a labeled wiring harness and wiring diagram. Each wire is self-explanatory except switch power and the fuel pump relay and where it will be connected on your Mustang. Behind the driver's side shock tower, you should have two weather pack connectors left over after you remove the EEC-4 wiring harness. Find the corresponding connectors on the EEC-4 wiring harness you removed and cut them off the harness while several inches of wire remain with each connector. If you do not want to damage your original wiring harness, you may be able to get connectors from a third party or source them from a yard. These connectors are where your uninterrupted switched power from the ignition switch will be located that will activate your EFI system and your ignition system along with the signal wire for the oil pressure gauge, coolant temperature gauge, oil level light, which is not used, the windshield washer fluid level light, which must be wired, and the coolant level light, which is not used. Refer to your Mustang's wiring schematic for wire colors and their con corresponding connectors. Locate each of the wires and label them for later. The fuel pump relay wire will take a different path because you only replaced the fuel pump in the tank and did not start an entire new wired system to run it, you will retain and be able to use all of the factory wiring and components as well as the inertia switch safety system. This will save you time, money, and possibly save your life in the case of a rear collision. Again, you will refer to your wiring schematic for your Mustang but this time you are concerned with the harness left over in the passenger front kick panel after the EEC-4 computer has been removed. Find the computer control relay trigger ground in the wiring harness and ground it to the chassis. Connect the EFI trigger power wire to the fuel pump relay trigger power wire in the harness. If wired correctly, your EFI system should now be able to activate the fuel pump relay in return activating the fuel pump while retaining the inertia safety switch. As with the carburetor setup, parts such as hoses, cables, and fittings should not be pre-purchased. Measurements must first be taken once all the main components are installed to ensure proper length and fitment. If you find my videos helpful, please like and share them with other enthusiasts. Also, please subscribe to my channel.